So we are, this is research that we are doing at UC Riverside. Uh, this is a map of galaxies from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. Uh, this map contains something like 400,000 galaxies. Uh, we have three, three, 3D distances, so it's a three-dimensional map. We have distance to every galaxy. Uh, what we want to understand is uh, why there are so many kinds of galaxies and what, why galaxies in different places have different properties. <laughs> Plus, we know the galaxies in clusters tend to be red and have all the stars. In galaxies in the field, the galaxies that are more or less isolated, they, they tend to be blue. And they are still generating, uh, forming the stars. So one thing that we are trying to understand is why galaxies in different environments have different properties, di different stellar populations, different colors. So in order to do that, we, uh, we use uh, observations like this and we also use simulations where we take a model of the universe and we let it evolve. Uh, this, this universe at the end will produce galaxies and we take these galaxies and trace them back in time to see why this galaxy, start, starting from a cloud of gas, collapsed and gave us at the end a red galaxy and sometimes itself a red gave us a blue galaxy. Are there certain areas within the universe where there's like a larger air, a lar larger concentration of a certain element? Yeah, of course. Oh, the elements. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, of course, we, we expect different concentrations in different places. I mean, it all depends on when, when stars form, uh, some stars explode mm -hmm. and they distribute elements around them. There is actually, there are a lot of people uh, doing research on this area. We, we want to understand how when the stars explode, they disperse elements around. And uh, these elements get uh, recycled by other stars. Mm -hmm. We can see this recycling. So we want, some people want to understand that. Why, it's, how, how is this recycling process happening? Hmm. Like here, for instance, uh, you can see a movie there. In, in the movie, you see the galaxies. And I can tell you that the galaxies are, have groups and there are places with no galaxies. But then if I show you the actual, an actual representation, you, you actually see it and you see, oh, there are some holes there. So we expect galaxies to be in these regions. Yes. Uh, our own Milky Way is in a wall, like one of these. Is there a certain thing within the spaces that you think is there? Uh, we know that there is a little bit of gas here, but there are no galaxies. Mm -hmm. So we see, when we look at the universe from very far away, we see regions with nothing. We call those uh, void regions. Mm -hmm. uh, there are really very few galaxies there. Um, and there are other places like filaments with some streams of galaxies, which is some flat regions that we call walls. We live in a wall, we live in something like this. Yes. So the Milky Way is near the center of, a, of one wall. Hmm. Now, 3D, 3D printing really helps us to understand these things because you get the model in your hands and you actually get it immediately. Mm -hmm. I could show you a 3D visualization, you, you kind of get it. But once you touch it, you say, ah, of course, <laughs> it looks like a piece of cheese. How long did it take to print that? Uh, this took like a night. Okay. I'm just, I'm just wondering. <laughs>